Hi. Hey, Daily Plate. Hi, how's it going, guys? I'm gonna let everybody hop in for a minute. You know, I was watching um, these replays and I, I realized that when I say hi to you guys, I always go, hi, 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 like I'm calling dogs. So um, I realized that from now on, I'm gonna say it like really low, like, hey guys. Glad you're here, Paper Apron. Good morning to you. So I don't have to listen to that high-pitched tone when I get excited. The more excited I get, like, the louder I get. Hey, thank you, cute hair. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, last week I think I mentioned, like, I just had to get it, get it out of here. It was driving me crazy, so... Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm really excited that you're here. Um, thanks for the hearts. And I'm really hoping Periscope is recording this chat because when I post this on YouTube, I look like I'm talking to myself and, and, and I don't know why that is. So I apologize if you're watching these replays and there's no chat. That's super frustrating. I understand. So I do my best to read the question back before I answer it. Hopefully, hopefully I do a good job of that. But hi, everybody. My name's Trisha. My blog is called Eat Your Beat and I help food photographers and food bloggers get the knowledge they need to capture amazing images. So um, I just want to let you know, um, if you guys want to share this out, if you think anybody would be interested in hearing about low light food photography. We've got a beautiful um, overcast cloudy day here. I saw the sun peek through for a minute and I started to panic like, no, no, go back behind those clouds. No. Um, and then we're going to talk about using color and movement in your shots. And then we're also going to talk about um, uh, how to use products. If you want to put a product in your shot and how you can incorporate in the natural cohesive way. Okay. So um, if you want to take a quick look, I will just show you by flipping... And I've already got everything set up here. Um, I'm gonna show you my kitchen, which is super messy, but so I've got my great couple of windows here. I've had to lower the blinds on that window just to kind of adjust the light. You can see I've kind of got some dappled lighting going on. And then I have my tripod arm here. Um, that's all my notes that I uh, write for you guys to make sure that I am clipping along. So um, I've got my tripod arm and I'm just gonna snap you in to the tripod arm. Hold on one second, there we go. And then I will be able to move everybody around. Give me some hearts if you love when I do the aerial shots because I really think these are super exciting. I love doing these for you guys. Isn't it fun to do an aerial shot? Yay! I know you're not seeing my face, but you don't need to see my face. Trust me, I'm, I'm here, I promise. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is um, when we talk about looking for natural light, um, as you know, I often talk about finding a space in your kitchen that's gonna have the most light. Um, so the first thing that I've done is I've located my windows here that I have just over there, two windows right there. And then I'm gonna look, the way I'm gonna locate that is look for a bright spot on the floor. That's usually the best way that you can uh, figure out where the light's hitting. Um, this might be considered a hot spot and it's really great for low light food photography because it's not a super bright spot, right? It's not going to blow out your images. You've got that diffusion of the clouds that's actually going to give you just plenty of light on your subject. So I found my spot that I want to be in and I'm just going to set up my shot kind of in this place, right? So, okay, you're going to have to wait. There's Arthur, everybody. He always tries to make an appearance. <laughs> So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some linens and that's gonna, everybody gives hearts for Arthur. He is always so popular. If you could see him now, he is about to throw a fit, I think. Um, <laughs> you guys, do you wanna say hi to everybody? Not if you're crying, no, good, that's a good idea. Listen, I'll get you a snack when I'm done, okay? Why don't you have an orange for right now? Um, love aerial shots and hello, Arthur. Thanks, Ash. <laughs> So basically, something that I like to incorporate in my shots is I love to use the movement of linens, right? And so I think the best thing for you to kind of consider when you're picking your linens is something that's just gonna have a lot of movement to it, and it's just gonna give you a really beautiful motion. Because while we are working um, on a flat image, you still can play with aspects of motion and just sort of moving, moving things through your shot. Okay, don't eat a lemon, but go ahead and find an orange and stuff. So what I want to do next is I've decided that I'm going to use this 10 pie plate um, to put my, I'm working on a, a purple potato, herbed potato salad. So I'm just going to want to take my potato salad and figure out where exactly I'm going to want to place that where it's going to have 
the best light source. Um, Jurassic Julian. This linen happens to be from Sir La Tab. They are, it is actual linen. And I think um, actual linen is a really great, <laughs> oh God, I'm glad. I think actual linen is really great because then, um, you know, you've got a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of play in it. It's very forgiving. Um, I've also mentioned before, I like to find um, fabrics that are dual side, the same thing on both sides so that when you're playing around with it, um, it's not going to give you problems. I will cut this orange, but not right now. Okay. In a minute. Um, you guys don't mind if I just take a break and cut an orange for Arthur, right? <laughs> so basically I'm just going to put this linen back down here, kind of give it a little flip, see what looks the best. I'm not taking any pictures today because I mean right now, because I want to just do this styling for you and then I'll take my pictures later. But I really like how this is starting to shape up. And what I do is I try to just move my linens as much as possible. So now I think you can see, sure, no problem. Just take care of your kids, honey, it's fine. So now you can see that we've kind of got this nice flowing linen that's kind of um, bringing us down through this side of the image. I think that's really great for composition. Remember, we, we are gonna be adding things to our story, but right now we've just got some really great composition right here. So I'm gonna add in, this plate here, and I'm gonna put some potato salad right there. Do you want some of this? You can have some of this. So I've mixed up this purple um, herbed potato salad, and this is another thing that I'm talking about when we discuss colors, because I've got a lot of beautiful colors here, and then I'm really gonna choose accents that are going to not only add to the story I'm trying to tell, but they're really gonna highlight the colors that I'm using. Um, you, playing with color and movement is something that I talk about um, in my full resource, Eat Pretty Things. So those of you who have checked that out, you probably understand um, exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna start placing some potatoes in here. And you can see it's looking a little dark um, for right now, but eventually when I shoot this, I'm gonna be able to adjust and pick up the beautiful shadows and then the beautiful highlights where the light is gonna reflect on things and it's gonna give me some really great color here. Um, I might just place a couple more right there. Arthur is having a day, you guys. Oh, yeah, I love the way that's looking. So, okay, thanks for the hearts, you guys. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, let's think about color. I know it looks a little dim here. Um, I don't think I can adjust, nope, can't adjust it. But okay, basically this is what I'm gonna do. I've got some beautiful purple herbed potatoes, right? So if we think about colors that can be complementary, um, what I think is a great color combination is purple and yellow. So I'm just gonna take some lemon and I'm gonna zest some um, lemon zest just over the top of this because I think purple and yellow are two colors that go really beautifully together and it's a natural thing that you would probably put onto a potato salad, right? So does anybody love lemon zest? Who's a fan? Who saw my picture the other day of six inch ribbon curls, right? They didn't think I could do it. <laughs> this is just a regular KitchenAid lemon zester. It's very easy to use and I'm just going to go all the way around so that I can get some of those really pretty curls. And as I mentioned before, um, I have no problem um, being messy. So I can always take away, right? I mean, I just have a lot of fun when I'm playing with things. And I love to kind of add the movement of something like this in my shot, right? And so then as you're going, you can kind of push things around or if you feel like it's too heavy on one side, move it. And then I'm always a fan of just using lemon zest throughout, right? So. Let's just put some throughout. It's gonna give us some nice ways to incorporate the rest of that movement. And it's gonna look natural. I mean, it, it looks natural to me because I'm messy. Maybe you're not as messy as me, but it's also a way to kind of help add to that movement that we have going. Let's not forget up here. We got some blank space up there, right? Okay, very nice. Now, another thing that I think goes really well um, with purple, do you use tweezers for moving tiny bits? The paper and apron asks. Yes, sometimes I do, um, but it's not like a deal breaker. You know, I mean, yes, I have clumsy hands, so if I need something to move, I do move it with a tweezer, but you guys, typically, I'm not that detail-oriented, so it really just depends on what I'm working on. You know what I mean? Um, but yes, sometimes I do use tweezers. Um, but, you know, just being honest, a lot of times I don't, so. 
Okay, um, moving on, I'm gonna use some, um, I've got some dried chives that I kinda wanna go with, and I think it'll be really pretty. And plus, this is a dry herbs potato salad. So I think that is going to add to my image even more just by incorporating these dried potato, um, sorry, these dried chives. So if you just wanna throw some chives on there, um, obviously fresh chives would be great too, but in this case, I do wanna highlight that I'm using um, a dried herb. So we've got some more stuff going on there. And then I'm just gonna push these around and kind of get some nice light coming in on some of these potatoes. So you can see we've got some nice light here and then some nice shadows light light got some shadows over here and this is something too that say if this image comes out too dark don't be um don't hesitate to just you know add some color back or exposure back into it when you're in post processing okay so well, let's talk about adding um other things that would be part of this shot natural parts of this shot right so um, I'm definitely, this is an olive oil based uh, potato salad. So you could definitely add in, um, you know, your oil to show that that's something you've used. Um, you could add in any sort of utensil. So I've got some utensils here. I don't know, what do you guys think? You wanna vote? One, two, or three. I don't know, what do you think? So this one's kind of small, but it adds nicely to the shot. This one, is a little um, little more round, and this one's a little more oval. Two, Jurassic Julian, you're first. Paper, paper, it says two, two. So this um, particular spoon is actually from Polder's Old World Market, um, hand carved, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so yeah, you could definitely add this in any way that you see fit, if you wanna put it here, if you wanna add it into the shot here, over here. Just any way that you think is gonna be a natural place for this uh, spoon to kinda sit and live, and then remember, you know, as you're shooting, also take into consideration the size, right? So I think for this shot, this spoon's looking a little a little big for what, what I kind of want to do. I'm going to go back to number three for a minute because I just want to really put my focus on the potatoes. I may change it back to number two when I take the actual shots, but for now, I think I just want to use this guy, right? He's a little bit smaller. There we go, I like the way that's looking. Okay, so we've talked about movement. So we've kind of got our, our napkin that's kind of moving through here. And we've got a little bit of um, negative space up here, which I really like to play with. Um, and then we've talked a little bit about adding colors. So I've got some purple potatoes. I've got some beautiful green chives. Um, I've got some bright yellow lemon zest. Um, so let's talk about if you want to highlight a product, right? So like, for example, you know, if some, especially if some of you guys are bloggers, um, you're going to have opportunities where you are using a product that you want to highlight. And I really like to do that in a natural way, um, to incorporate the product as part of your shot. I think that's really important. So for example, um, for this one, this would be the, uh, front or, frontier co-op simply organic parsley, right? So there's parsley in my potato salad. And if I want to make this a natural part of my shot, I can definitely use this bottle, right? And that's a lot of times what people love for you to do. So how can we place this in a way that looks natural? It's very comfortable. It's moving around. And then also using the actual spice itself pulled out. Um, I do this a lot when I want to highlight something. So you can see we've got some beautiful green color here and we've got some nice shadows again just a fan of using shadows and moving things around. And even if you wanted to add some to your board over here, right? So we've added some to our board. We can still see the actual spice. We can see the bottle, which looks nice. And then um, how about how about a measuring spoon? So we're gonna just add a measuring spoon in there, right? So this looks like a story, yeah? So now we've got our story. We're sharing that we have made potato salad right? And we have used some herbs and some thematic elements like the zest. What material is the tabletop? Um, this is a wood tabletop backdrop from Erickson Woodworks, and they make the majority of the tabletops that I use. So to answer that question. Okay. So that's basically, I think, what I kind of wanted to go through. So let's go and we'll just do a quick recap. Okay, so the first thing that we talked about was finding our light. We've got a low 
um, like cloudy day, what I would consider a high visibility cloudy day. Um, so we're able to see quite well, um, but we just need to find that perfect light. And then, you know, a lot of times I talk about using um, the backdrops, which I have done before the black matte boards. You can see this guy peeking in right here. So you could use him here if you wanted to shine a light. You can see how the light moves when I move him around. You could use him on this side of the board if you wanted to keep like cabinetry from bouncing um, a color cast back in. You can do anything like that. Um, so then the other thing we talked about is uh, color. So adding color to our shot in terms of purple potatoes and then finding out colors that work well with purple. So colors like yellow and the lemon zest and green and the uh, dried chives and the green parsley, right? So that's another way. Um, the other thing that we talked about was movement, finding a way to move your linens and um, move the parts of your story into your shot to really help, um, help move your eye through the image. Um, Lauren asks, what are you using again for bouncing light? I'm using nothing. Um, so when I specifically work in low light situations, I typically am not going to bounce light back into my shot because I really want to highlight those shadows. But if you wanted to, you could just use any simple reflector board, very easy to use, or you could use a piece of foam board that you find, um, at like Target or anything like that. So definitely any of those things. Um, so, and then the last thing we talked about would be, yeah, of course. The last thing we talked about would be using products in your shots, right? So if you're wanting to highlight a particular product, definitely feeling comfortable of using the container in a natural way that flows with your shot, but also using it, um, you know, in a way where you're showing the actual product. Um, I think that's helpful as well. So I'm going to flip this around really quick. I am. And I'm going to let you guys do any questions that you might have for me. Um, I'll put you back in my tripod so you're not seeing all the shaking that I'm doing because I've had too much coffee. Okay, so does anybody have any questions? I know some people um, maybe popped out and popped back in, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I like to keep these relatively short, about 15 to 20 minutes, so it's easy to digest, no pun intended. Um, Silver Lily Moon, I got my shot in the dark ebook today. Good, I'm so glad, love the hair. Thank you so much, Angela, thank you. Thanks for all the hearts. Um, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Again, today we talked about finding your natural light in low light situations. We talked about using color in your shots, using movement in your shots. How to light brown curries that look boring. That's what Bella asks. How to light brown curries that look boring. Okay, so one of my tips is when I'm working with something that maybe looks flat, or is really dark, so like meat or meatballs or something. Um, what I like to do is similar to what I talked about here, um, not necessarily that you need more light, but that you need to add elements that are going to add to um, add to the shot, add to the color, right? Break it up a little. So maybe adding some fresh herbs, maybe adding some um, spices like something red or brown or um you know just something that's going to kind of break up that uh curry because if like if i'm thinking of like a japanese curry i kind of just think of like curry and rice on a plate you know like side by side so i would definitely use some herbs to kind of break that up um you could even use a reflector to bounce light back in if that's kind of something that you're talking about but typically what i like to do is use something like fresh herbs or um, something green or bright or like lemon zest or lime zest even or even like like a drizzle of coconut milk. I don't know exactly the type of curry, but anything like that that's gonna add some color and some texture and some movement back into that plate. So that's my answer. Any other questions while I'm here? Thank you, good, I'm so glad. Thank you for that. <laughs> you mentioned you're using a tripod to hold your iPhone. Is that a specific tripod head? Um, yes, so I am using a Manfrotto tripod and then attached to that I have removed my ball head and I am using a Manfrotto tripod arm which is just an extension that screws on to where the ball head was removed and then um, I bought like a um, iPhone extension on Amazon so it's just a clip that holds my iPhone so I pop it into the clip at the end of the tripod arm. <laughs> Sorry, that was a long explanation. I should do like a, a little uh, post about that so you guys can see kind of the, the, the back end of what I'm doing. Not the back end, that doesn't sound nice. Um, okay, anything else? 
you were wondering the same thing. Okay, maybe I will write that. Yeah, I'll write, I'll write a quick little thing about that. Um, so thank you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate hanging out with you on this Friday afternoon. And I just wanted to let you know, some of you have already, um, gotten my new resource and I'm so excited because it's finally available. If you're not on my email list, then you probably haven't seen, but I have released my newest ebook called shot in the dark. These are all my notes. Sorry. So if you are interested in checking out my newest resource, it's going to be at eatyourbeats.com backslash shot in the dark. You guys can take a screen capture of this and then you will be able to um, see it. But I have just heard such an overwhelming response of kindness from you guys that I just so appreciate it. So if you're looking for my newest resource, that's where it's going to be. Um, or on my website, eatyourbeats.com. That's where you can easily find it. Um, but I just love hanging out with you guys and thank you for joining me uh, today and I will see you guys next week. Okay. Bye.